السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه الحمد لله this is the 95th session of سيرة خاتم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم and we've been talking about the hadith of ifk the <coughs> slander of Aisha رضي الله عنها and we talked about um, got up to the point where after returning from the journey of Murasi' the battle of Murasi' uh, Aisha radhal anha she had fallen sick and for a month she was unaware of the buhtan and the slander and the lies that were being spread about her and then we talked about how she did eventually find out and uh, when she confirmed it with her mother uh, her sickness came back so even though she was feeling better she started to feel sick again her fever came back because of the uh, the weight of this slander and what was being said about her. Uh, we also talked uh, last week, so so we talked about the definition of buhtan and what it means. And uh, I, I talked about the ayah where Ibrahim alayhi salam is arguing with the king Namrud and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kafar that the one who had kufr in his heart, the one who was a kafir, which is the king, he was speechless, he was not able to respond to uh, the argument of Ibrahim So that's where Bhutan comes from, uh, basically to be speechless. And in this case, what we're talking about is Bhutan is a lie, an accusation, a slander that is uh, thrown upon a person where the person is totally speechless because of how uh, wrong and how much of a lie that that is. And here in this case, for example, we see that Aisha was uh, speechless. She was not able to speak. She just continued to cry uh, throughout this ordeal. And uh, one of the things, uh, if you go back to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, where he, he asked the Sahaba, he said, do you guys know atadruna mal ghiba? Do you know what ghiba is? And the Sahaba responded by saying that Allah and His Messenger know best وسلم, And then the Prophet ﷺ says, ذِكْرُكَ أَخَاكْ بِمَا يكره, That whatever you mention about your brother or your sister in Islam, which they do not like. So when they're not present, you're talking about them, and you're saying something that they do not like, something that yakra, that they be my yakra, something they do not like, and it was asked, and the Prophet said, then okay, that's what that's if we're talking about something that's uh, present in the person. What if it's true? If we're talking about the person, it's something about that person, but it's true, and it's you know it's found in that person. The Prophet said that then then you have backbidden that person. And and if it's not وَإِلَّمْ يَكُنْ فِيهِ مَا تَقُولُ And if what you said about that person was not present, if it's a lie, it's made up, it's a lie, it's a slander, then فَقَدْ بَهَتَّ Then you have done بُهْتَان So this is where this word comes from, بُهْتَان It's basically to make up a lie, a slander against someone. Now, we talked about how the Prophet ﷺ sought counsel, sought shura from the Sahaba. Uh, two of them, for example, uh, in another one, another um, it's mentioned at the end of the hadith where one of the wives of the Prophet So um, obviously other wives were also consulted, uh, but one of them in particular is mentioned by Aisha anha is Zainab bint Jahsh anha, and the reason why she mentions because they had a kind of um, uh, you could say uh, uh, rivalry. Ri- rivalry, yeah, They had like a rivalry between them. So because of that, she mentions how Zainab anha also was asked. But she said good about Aisha. Anha. She said, I don't know anything about her except good. So this is um, at the end. But uh, at that point, uh, the, uh, Aisha anha mentions the two people who were summoned by the Prophet and asked their shura. And this is Ali ibn Abi Talib, anha, the cousin and the son in law of the Prophet, anha, and Osama bin Zaid. Anha. Okay, Osama bin Zaid, anha, who is uh, the son of the adopted son of the Prophet. Anha. So Zayd ibn Haritha being the father and Osama bin Zayd being uh, the son. So they were close to the house of the Prophet and they knew, you know, they, basically they're from the household of the Prophet and they know the ins and outs of the house. So the Prophet asked them, what do you think? And uh, Osama was the first to speak. He basically said that this is your family and we know nothing about them except khair. We know nothing about them except good. So basically stick to, with your family, keep your family close to you. Do not even think about divorcing them. 
Ali Radhalan, his shura was a little bit different. He said basically because seeing the you know the the, the trial and tribulation that the Prophet and the stuff he's going through, all the you know psychological uh, stuff he's going through, and and um, uh, the Ali Radhalan responds by saying that basically Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has not made it you know uh, strict on you there's other women out there basically meaning that there's other women you can if this is such a ordeal for you if it's so difficult for you why don't you just you know marry another he didn't say anything against Aisha Radana, but he just said that basically it's open for you you can always marry another woman now but he did say that ask Barira Radana. Barira Radana being one of the maids maid servants uh, of the the Prophet's house and he said that consult with her and she should know better. She should know more about Aisha Radhanana. So when she was she was summoned and asked, we know that Barira Radhanana, she said that I swear I don't know anything about her except good. And the only the worst I could say, the worst that she could say about Aisha Radhanana, she says that sometimes uh, I'll I'll be kneading the dough and I'll tell her to watch it while I go and take care of something and she'll fall asleep. And when I come back, I find out that the goat or the lamb or you know the the animal of the house uh, had came and eaten the the dough. So that's the worst I could say about her that she's innocent and she's young and she just falls asleep. So that's that's basically she's saying that she's also innocent. So we talk about how the Prophet after this he goes and Aisha Radhanaha says that she he goes and ascends the member. So he goes to Muslim Nabawi, ascends the member, and he starts to ask who will give me who will basically ask, uh, who will help me, or who will, um, uh, what's the word, uh, relieve me, you could say, relieve me of, uh, of any type of, um, uh, what's the word, I, I mean, like relieve me of any type of, uh, um, of, of, of uh, how would you say, what's the word, um, like if, if I was to punish him, then no one would say anything. Like you would just relieve me of any kind of words or talks or talk or anything. You would just let me let me go ahead and do that. Basically, and the reason why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was so careful in the past, where, uh, in, the, in, in future incidents too, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's a Muslim who says something about the Prophet in his face, in the blessed face of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, saying basically like, be just. For example, mm -hmm. when he's giving out the Mal Ghanima after um, uh, Banu Hawazin, and he's giving out that, and he, the Prophet became really upset. And Umar bin Khattab says, Let me cut off the head of this Munafiq. How dare he speak to you like this? But the Prophet said that, No, I don't want people to say that Rasulullah that Muhammad kills his own companions. So again, the Prophet was saying that, uh, Who will relieve me of this? And, and basically not saying, or who will, another interpretation of this ulama say, who will help me to basically uh, rid me of this, of this problem, of this man, Abdullah ibn Ubay. So we talked about how uh, the Prophet ﷺ sent the member and said this. And when he said this, um, uh, one of the Sahaba who was from the other tribe, so we know that Abdullah ibn Ubay from Khazraj and from Aus, the other tribe of Ansar, Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, he stands up, and Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, uh, he stands up and he says that, uh, oh, oh, Ya Rasulullah, if he's from our tribe, then we will cut his head off. And if, if he's from the other tribe, then just give us the order and we'll take care of it. Okay? And again, this was, it was known who the Prophet was, even though the Prophet did not say his name out, out or, you know, specifically. But everyone knew who it was. Everyone knew the nifaq of Abdullah ibn Obey when his... When the surah was revealed, surah Munafiqun was revealed, everyone knew that he was the head instigator and the one who had spread the lie and the slander against Aisha radhiallahu So they knew who he was talking about. And Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad says that if he's from the other tribe, knowing well he, that he was from the other tribe, just give us the order and we'll take care of it. Now, this is where it turns where Sa'ad ibn Ubada uh, So Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, uh, Ubada radhiallahu these two were leaders of the Ansar. Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad being the leader of the tribe of Aus. And we know that Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad uh, he dies in the, uh, uh, in the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Okay, Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad died in the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi And this is the famous hadith where the Prophet was, was tiptoeing around 
and there's no one around. So the Sahaba were there, and the Prophet is tiptoeing around uh, to get into the front so he can do the janazah prayer. And the Sahaba asked the Prophet later that, why were you walking? There was absence of, there was a, you know, so much space. So why was it that you were, you know, and then the Prophet said that there was no absence of space, there was, there was no space, for, basically, uh, because the angels were crowded for the janazah of Sa'ad, or they're coming to uh, basically take him. So uh, that was also the Prophet said about, about uh, Sa'ad Radhan, ihtaz al arsh. So limauti Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad Radhan. So when Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad Radhan passed away, the, the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moved and shook out of happiness that Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad Radhan, remember everyone when they pass away, their ruh is taken out by the angels, uh, the angel of death, and then the angels take that ruh and ascend to the heavens. So the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they get close to the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the arsh of Allah shook out of happiness when Sa'ad Radhan was being brought close. Now, the other Sahabi that I said, Sa'ad ibn Ubad Radhan, he's from the same tribe of Abdullah ibn Ubay, from Khazraj. He stood up and he says that basically that you have lied, you will not kill him, nor do you have uh, ability to kill him. Like basically, we're going to stop you, we're not going to allow you to kill our men. And when he said this, and Aisha Radhanaha, she gives him, a, she, she basically says this and she gives an excuse for him. She said, she said, فَقَامَ سَعْدُ بِنُ عَبَادَ رَضَعَنْ وَكَانَ قَبْلَ ذَلِكْ رَجُلًا صَالِحًا So Aisha Radhanaha says, before this incident, Sa'ad ibn Abad Radhan was well known as a pious man. He was one of the leaders of Ansar, one of the early Sahaba to become Muslim. And he was known as a pious man. He never went against the Prophet. He never said anything against the Prophet. So he was known as a pious man. So Aisha Radhanaha, making an excuse, says, but at that point, because of tribalism and, and whatnot, and again, the yeah, Sahaba were in a state, it's been over a month, and remember just recently, a month before when they were traveling back from Muraisi, I talked about this, where they got into that argument, there was a, they were about to have a big fight was about to break out uh, over the water, and then now they're coming back, and you know, the Surah Munafiqun, there's a lot of, you know, you're from Khazraj, you're a leader from the Khazraj, and you're fellow tribesmen, and a lot of their Satis, you could say, a lot of the people who are with you, your friends, are munafiqeen. And there's a surah re re revealed about that. So you can just imagine the state that Sa'ad ibn Ubad was in. And that he, and then on top of that, the Prophet was in this, uh, in this distress where he's, his wife has been slander, uh, slandered against. And the Prophet is in this constant distress. So Sa'ad ibn Ubad in that state of mind, the tribalism overcame him. And he said that you will not be able to kill our men. So when he said, uh, said this, another Sahabi, Usaid ibn Hudayr he uh, then stood up and he said that, no, you have lied. And he says, he went on, he said, La Amrullah, that you have lied by the, by, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, La Naqtulannahu, I swear by Allah, I will, we will kill him. And he says, فَإِنَّكُمْ munafiq تُجَادِلُ عَنِ الْمُنَافِقِينَ He said that you are a munafiq, na'udhu billah, and you are fighting um, uh, for, on behalf of a munafiq. Uh, on, on behalf of the munafiqeen. Now again, it doesn't mean that he is munafiq. This is just uh, one of the words that he said out of anger. And because he's basically saying like, how dare you talk and defend a munafiq? That he's clearly is known. His nifaq is clearly known. The surah was revealed. All, everyone knows about it. And he's talking against the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu And you're defending this you know, disgusting man. How dare you do this? So he said to him basically that you are, if you're defending him and if you're really on his side, you're basically one of them. And that's, you know, he, he just said that out of, out of anger. And then we know that the Prophet they were, the, 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 the noises were loud, people started arguing. They were about to have a civil war and they were about to take out their swords and start fighting. And the Prophet uh, came down from the, uh, descended from the mimbar and he quieted them down and then the Prophet left. Now, also, I, I mentioned last week at the end that um, uh, I, I think, I believe that this is probably where the hadith comes into play, where Abdullah ibn, Abdullah ibn Ubay, the son of Abdullah ibn Ubay, where he comes to the Prophet Sallallahu and he says that, I heard that you want my father to be killed. And he says, allow me to do it. Give me the order, let me do it. 
because I cannot bear to see the killer of my father walking free in the streets and I'm afraid I might kill him uh, and by killing, a, and he's talking about his own father, that by killing my father, uh, a munafiq or a, a kafir, I will kill a Muslim and then I might, I might be thrown into hellfire along with uh, basically uh, my father like that's what this basically what he's saying and he says allow me to do that so Allah alam but this is most likely where it makes sense that this is where his son came and spoke to the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet ﷺ said uh, rather just keep close to him and be nice to your father so going on uh, Aisha radhal anha in the hadith she says to yawmi thalik kullah so that day when she heard the Prophet ﷺ ascending a member and saying what he said, and then also the Sahaba, um, you know, about to fight, she started. She continuously cried that 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 whole day, and she says, "I was not able to sleep." Also, and then she says, "Qalat wa asbaha abawaya andi wa qad bakaytu laylatain wa yawman." So she said that two nights and one day had passed. And I was continuously crying. I was not able to stop. She was not able to stop. And she says, "La yarqa uli dam'un." So this, the the tears would not stop. Wala aqtahilu binom. So two, three days had passed. She was not even able to sleep because of the intensity of what has been said against her. And this shows her innocence. That uh, you know, pious women, when something even small is said against them, or something like this, this is a huge thing said about them. Uh, even if something even smaller than this is said, you know, they can't, uh, they, they get all restless. Like, how could, how could someone say something about me like this? Just imagine if someone had said something uh, as big as this. So she was not able to sleep and she continuously cried for, uh, for a couple of days. Now she says, Hatta inni la adhunnu anna al-buka falikun kabidi. She says that I think, I, until I thought that my liver will burst out of the, the constant crying. I have cried so, and this is one thing. Like when someone cries, you know, um, the tears and the heat that the, the body produces when you cry, um, out of you know, out of sorrow, uh, crying that it it makes you uh, you know you need to you get dehydrated and whatnot, and sometimes you can even get pain uh, in your in your liver or in your side. So she said that I was crying so much, I thought that my liver will burst uh, because of the constant crying that I was going through. Now. After this, Aisha radhiallahu anha, she says, uh, as I was there and my, my parents are with me in my room, so the, Aisha radhiallahu anha has gone to, back to her house, to the house of um, the Prophet sallallahu and she says that as my parents are sitting there with me, and they, you know, they're trying to uh, relieve my distress, and they're trying to you know, calm me down, and I'm, she's, con she's constantly, wa ana abki, and I'm constantly crying, she says then, a woman from the Ansar, فَاسْتَأْذَنَتْ عَلَيَا إِمْرَأَةٌ مِنَ الْأَنصَارِ so one of the women from the Ansar asked permission to enter into the house and I gave her permission and then she came in tabki ma'i. She did not say a word. She came in said, you know, assalamu alaikum warahmatullah and then she said no other word except she sat down and she started crying with Aisha radhiallahu anha sharing her pain basically. And we know there's many hadith about this. For example, uh, uh, where the Prophet said that when a Muslim, ma min abdin Muslim, that there is no Muslim uh, slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ata akhan lahu yazuruhu. So when a person comes to another Muslim, yazuruhu fillah, illa nadahu munadin min as sama, an tibta wa tabat laka al jannah, wa illa qal allahu fi malakuti arshi, abdi zarafiya wa alayya qirahu. وَعَلَيَّ قِرَاهُ فَلَمْ يَرْضَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِثَوَابٍ دُونَ الْجَنَّةِ So basically the Prophet is telling us that it is called out in the heavens that you have done a pure thing and everything will become, and, and Jannah will become pure for you and has become even more mutazayyin, uh, has become even more beautiful for you and also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you Jannah. Basically, the person who does this for the sake of Allah and nothing else will get a reward of Jannah. And there's another similar hadith where a person was traveling to another town, a neighboring town, to go visit someone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel in a human form and he was standing on the path. 
He said to him that, oh, where are you going? He just asked him, where are you going? He said, I'm going to this town to go visit my friend. He said, do you have some, does he owe you money? Do you need to go, you know, pay, buy something from him? Do you need to ask him something? Are you going for, like, what are you going for? And he says that, no, I'm just going because just visit him for the sake of Allah. So the angel says that I am a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa meeting. I have been sent by Allah subhanahu wa to give you the glad tidings that he is pleased with you. Basically that you, you did this for the sake of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you. Also, uh, we know that, for example, if someone visits someone for the sake of Allah, if someone is sick, so when someone's sick, you know, you could see you, the person goes through distress. They're tired. They're they're feeling sick. They're not feeling well. They're not feeling the normal selves. So just to go visit that person to make them feel better, to say some words, you know, to give them hope, for example, or or just to tell them, you know, just keep them company to make them happy. Uh, that also is a big reward. There's a hadith uh, where Abu Sa'id al Khudiri Radran he went to visit Hassan Radran when Hassan Radran was sick. And Ali Radhan was there, the father of Hassan Radhan was there, and he asked Abu Sa'id that did you come for what did you did you come here uh, just as a regular visit or did you come to visit a sick person? Like what's your intention behind this? And he said, No, no, I came here as a ayat. I came to visit a sick person because Hassan Radhan is sick. So Ali Radhan says that I heard the Prophet say that the one who visits a sick person in the morning, seventy thousand angels are appointed to make dua on the behalf of that person until the evening. And if you go in the evening, up to the morning, 70,000 angels make dua on your behalf. Uh, one more hadith I'll mention is that uh, this shows also the importance that of having the sharing the pain with the fellow mu'mineen. That, you know, nowadays, especially nowadays with our current lives, uh, if you look, you know, we see videos all the time on WhatsApp, on Facebook, and, and, and uh, Instagram, and all these uh, you know, social media things. And a lot of times we just skip through them because we're like, oh, we're like so numb to the, to the pain that we just skip over them. But we see that, you know, the suffering that people are going through. The suffering that Muslim brothers and sisters are going through, and the, the hunger and all that stuff. And this is that we Muslims should be sharing the pain. Just like that Ansari woman came into the house of Aisha Radha and shared her pain. She didn't say anything, just cried with her. Muslims should have that feeling. We should have that thing that these are, we're one body. And then the hadith the Prophet said that in al mu'mina min ahl al iman. So one mu'min from the amongst the family of believers. Remember, we're all akhuwa, we're all brothers and sisters in Islam. So amongst that that family of iman of the family of mu'minin, bi manzilat al rasi min al jasad. It's just like the head to the body. Ya'lamu al mu'min li ahl al iman kama ya'lamu al jasadu li ma fi al ras. So when the head, you know, when you have a headache or something, and you started, uh, the whole body feels the fever. You starts feeling the pain along with the with the with the head of the body. Same thing with the believers. That all we're all one body. just We're just like one. <clears throat> excuse me. We're just like one body, and one part of the body feels pain. The other part of the body also feels pain. Now, after this, uh, Aisha radhal anha. She says that as we were in that state, I'm crying. The Ansari woman is also with me, and she's also crying. She says then the Prophet came. Uh, uh, so Rasulullah comes into the house and he فسلم, so he says assalamu alaikum uh, and then thumma jalasa and then he sat down and one thing that Aisha mentions she says walam yajlis indi qila ma qil. so before this the Prophet had not sat whatever was said the slander, since the slander started so almost a month the Prophet ﷺ never sat down with her. So he would come in, he would say, Kayfati, Assalamu Alaikum, and he would say, Kayfati, how are you doing, or how is she doing, talking to the people in the house, and then he would leave. Okay, so he wouldn't sit down with her, uh, and this is the first time he actually sat down with Aisha. Anha. So she says that, وَقَدْ لَبِثَ شَهْرًا لَا يُوحَى إِلَيْهِ فِي شَأْنِ بِشَيْهِ so basically she's saying that one month has passed, no wahi has come down, and Rasulullah would not sit down again with his distress and you know th all the things that are being said about his wife. Excuse me. So because of that, he, was, he, was, he did not come and sit with her. Now Rasulullah he sits down in tashahud form, uh, in seating of tashahud form, and he says to uh, Aisha anha. He says, Amma ba'd ya Aisha, 
إِنَّهُ بَلَغَنِي عَنْكِ كَذَا وَكَذَا So this and this has been said about you. And uh, the thing is here is that the Prophet ﷺ did not mention what was being said. And I talked about this before, that Aisha anha never once mentions in the hadith, in totality does not, is not mentioned, what was being said about her. The mother also did not, uh, you know, say, it's not mentioned anywhere in the hadith. So uh, the Prophet said, this has been said about you, and it's reached me that this was said about you. فَإِن kunti bari'a, And if you are innocent, so if you are innocent, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will basically um, declare your innocence. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, if you're innocent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will declare your innocence. And if you had uh, done uh, some sin, and here, uh, one thing to mention here, the meaning of ilmam. Okay, uh, this is actually mentioned in the uh, in the Quran, in Surah Al-Najm. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Audhu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim." Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Al-ladina yajtanibun kabair al-ithm wal-fawahish illa al-lamam. Inna Rabbaka wasi al-maghfira. So this ayah, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying in this ayah that those who stay away from kabair al-ithm, stay away from the major sins and the fawahish. These major sins, illa lamam, except those small sins. So one of the interpretation of this, Allah might say, this is talking about the minor sins, minor mistakes, minor sins. So here uh, the Prophet says, when kunti al mamti. So the ulama actually actually say that the Prophet knew that she did not do uh, the haram uh, like a, like a major sin, but. He was in doubt. He didn't know for sure. Maybe a minor sin, a small, like a minor sagar, was done. So he didn't. He wasn't for sure. And remember, the wahi was not being sent, so he wasn't sure. So he says, "Wa in kunti al mamti bidhambin." And if you have done a minor sin, fastaghfir Allah wa tuubi ilay. So ask Allah Subhanahu to forgive you and repent to Allah. Fa inna al abda ida tarafa thumma taba taba Allahu alayhi. So if an abd, if a slave of Allah does a sin and then recognizes their sin, tarafa, and this is the difference between uh, shaitan and Adam alayhi salam. When shaitan realized what he had done when he went against, uh, disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do the sajda to Adam alayhi salam, he started blaming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He blamed everyone except himself. He started blaming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He started and then all that he started uh, challenging Allah, saying that I will show you that this Adam alayhi salam and his his nasal, his uh, his uh, his, uh, his um, uh, pro, uh, was it? progeny, yeah, his progeny will not be good to you. They will not be dutiful to you, and you know, and whatnot. What he said, and on the other hand, Adam alayhi salam, as soon as he realized his mistake, he started doing toba, and he started actually in the uh, in the one of the riwayats is mentioned in Jannah itself. Remember the his clothing started coming off, and he started running. He started running, and Allah Swt asked him, "What are you? Why are you running? Why did you run?" He said, "Out of haya, out of haya from you, Allah, that I, you know, I didn't know what to do. I ran, or just ran in one direction because I didn't know. I couldn't face Allah Swt. I couldn't speak to you. I didn't. I felt so ashamed of what I had done. Okay, so." Uh, Adam alayhi salam did i'taraf he recognized his mistake and uh, what was the rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin he's actually saying that oh allah we have done wrong to ourselves and if you do not forgive us that we will be from the khasirin we will be from the losers so uh, this is the difference between that so the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said i'taraf thumma taba taba allah alayh so if anybody does any sin as long as you recognize that you did something wrong and you have repent remorse and you repent to Allah, Allah will forgive you. And we know the, you know, we talked about that I think before sometime that the shurut or the conditions of tawbah, remorse, okay, uh, regret and remorse. And then number two is stopping the sin, not doing the sin and then having an intention not to go back to the sin. So these are conditions of tawbah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely forgive uh, that person. So he says to her that if you are free, if you are innocent and free of this sin, Allah will 
uh, will will uh, will declare your innocence. And if it's the other way, if you have done some minor sin, just do tawbah and Allah will forgive you. So he says uh, he says this, and she responds by, uh, by asking her parents. So first, actually, uh, one thing to mention: she says that when he was finished with what he had said, she says, "Qala sa dami hatta ma hissu minhu qatratan." So she said that as soon as he was done and he said his words, she said, my tears stopped, my tears dried up, and I did not feel one drop. So she said, my, my eyes dried up, and now she's, she's uh, that um, difficulty, uh, that position of difficulty and sorrow and, and, and distress that she was in, it changed. Now instead of that, the tears dried, and now she became even, uh, she became, um, you could say, emotionally empowered and uh, you know psychologically empowered and she responded she said she said faqultu labi she said to she turned to her father to Abu Bakr Siddiq Radan she says uh, ajib ajib rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam anni so answer the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on my behalf basically you know tell him how i would never do such a thing okay she knows that she's innocent so she's saying to her father just answer the prophet the prophet is telling me if i'm Guilty, then Allah will, you know, and I do tawbah, Allah will subhanahu wa ta'ala will, uh, will forgive me. So you answer on my on behalf. And Abu Bakr Siddiq Radhan, he says, Wallahi ma adri ma aqul li Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he says, I, I swear I don't know what to say. I can't respond. I have nothing to say. Uh, I don't know how to respond to the Prophet. Then Aisha Radhan turns to her mother, Umm Ruman radhan anha, and she says, Ajibi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anni. So basically, Ajibi Rasulullah Sallallahu So respond to Rasulullah Sallallahu on my behalf. And she also responds by the same thing, that I don't know what to say, I don't know how to respond. Now Aisha Anha, she says, after the parents did not respond, she said, then I spoke up. فَقُلْتُ عَنَا جَارِيَةٌ حَدِيثَةُ sin. She said, then I was a young woman, and I spoke up. لَا أَقْرَأُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ كَثِيرًا She said, I didn't know a lot of the Qur'an. I didn't have a lot of the Qur'an memorized. So she says, I, sa- I said to the Prophet Inni wallahi laqad alimtu laqad sami'tum hadha al-hadith. That you, I know that you have heard this hadith. You've heard about this slander. You've heard about these things that were being said about me. Hatta staqarra fi anfusikum. Until that these words have gone into your hearts. And they have t- taken their place in your hearts. Wasaddaqtum bihi. And you have actually, uh, um, uh, what's the word, uh, tasdiq, um, approved or not approved. Um, you have taken it to be true, basically. You have taken this to be true. And she says, Fala in qultu, if I say, lakum inni bariyatun, if I say that I am innocent, if I like this, these words have hit your heart so hard and stay taking their place in your heart so much that if I say I am free or I am innocent, لا تصدقوني. You will not believe me. That if I say I'm I'm innocent, I didn't do this. You will never. You will not believe me. ولا إن اعترفت لكم. And if I acknowledge, بأمر والله يعلم والله يعلم أني منه بريء. If I uh, if I acknowledge something that Allah Subhanahu knows I didn't do, that you know you guys don't believe me. You guys don't know what happened. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who watches from above the heavens, watches everything and knows everything. He knows that I'm free. If I acknowledge this sin, acknowledge something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that I haven't done, sorry. Yeah, so so the first one, uh, they will not. If I say something that, if I say I'm innocent, you will not believe me. And if I acknowledge something that Allah SWT knows that I didn't do, then you will surely believe me. Like if I acknowledge, say yes, I'm guilty, I did do this sin, or I did a sin, then you will surely believe that. Because it's, it's taken its place in your hearts. So she says, فَوَاللَّهِ لَا أَجِدُ لِي وَلَكُمْ مَثَلَا إِلَّا أَبَا يُوسُفُ So in her you know, speech and in her emotion, she wasn't even able to remember or recall the name of the father of Yusuf alayhi salam, Ya'qub alayhi salam. She says that the only thing I could see in the Quran or I can, uh, I can think of as an example is like the example of Abba Yusuf, 
meaning the father of Yusuf alayhi salam, hina qal when he said, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ when he responded by saying that I will have فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ meaning that I will uh, resort to patience and وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ that basically what you have said and what you, what the, you know, he knew his children were lying to him when they said that uh, Yusuf alayhi was eaten by a wolf and, and you know, the, the whole story. So we, we know that they, he knew that they were lying, but he said that فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ That I'm not going to say anything to you, but I'm just going to basically leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ تَحَوَّلْتُ So then Aisha says, she says, Then I turned وَالتَّجَعْتُ عَلَى فِرَاشِ So she turned in her bed to the wall, and she basically continued crying. She started to cry. Um, actually, it's not mentioned that she cried, but you know, just imagine the state that she was in. But she turned to the wall and she had nothing else to say. So she says that, I swear by Allah, well, uh, uh, she says that I swear by Allah, or Allah subhanahu knows, sorry, Allah subhanahu knows, anni hina idin bari'un, that Allah subhanahu knew that I am innocent. And Allah Subhanahu and I knew that Allah Subhanahu Taala will declare my innocence, but she said that I swear by Allah, I didn't think that Allah Subhanahu will actually reveal ayat. She said I didn't think Quran will be revealed in my name to declare my innocence. Uh, I thought maybe at most Rasulullah Sallallahu will see a dream where he will be told through wahi that I'm innocent. And he said that she said that that's what I that's what I thought. And she says. Um, uh, لَشَأْنِي فِي نَفْسِي So my condition or myself in my own eyes كَانَ أَحْقَرَ مِنْ أَنْ يَتَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ فِيَّ بِأَمْرٍ وَلَكِنْ كُنْتُ أَرْجُوْ أَنْ يَرَى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في النوم رؤيا يبرئني الله في بها So basically she says that I, my, you know, my condition or myself in my own eyes is, it was less, I thought of myself not uh, of that position that Allah SWT will speak about me in the Qur'an or, or send down revelation about me in the Qur'an and what this teaches us is the humbleness and humility that she had you know a lot of times we pray uh, Fajr in the masjid for example or read one juice of the Qur'an or do some dhikr or we listen to a bayan or give a bayan for example uh, or you know read tahajjud prayer or anything and we start to think you know I'm, I'm something you know, I'm I'm big. I'm I'm something, and and uh, billah, we start getting this feeling in our heart. And Aisha Radhal Anha, being um, Ummuhatul, one of the Ummuhatul Mu'minin, being the wife of the Prophet and beloved of the Prophet Sallallahu she's saying that I knew that I was innocent, and Allah knows that I was innocent, and I didn't. But I didn't think that He will send down revelation about me. That I didn't think I was going to be. I'm that. <laughs> You know, uh, high of a status in the eyes of Allah, or I was, I was even worth uh, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will send down revelation. And this is very important to understand that the Prophet Sallallahu tells in the Hadith, "Man tawada alillah rafaahu Allah." That the one who is humble for the sake of Allah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will raise that person. So, izza, honor is not when a person shows off and starts telling people what they've done, the ibadat and, and the, you know, their history. I've done this and this and this, you know, trying to show off, trying to give people his trying to get honor in the eyes of people. That's not what gives us honor. But the honor will be given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we lower ourselves. When we're humble for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise that person, not only in the eyes of uh, not only that person raised and beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels, but also in the eyes of the people. So we don't need to show off, we don't need to tell people. We should actually, on the other hand, keep our good deeds secret. We should do that as much as possible so they're more sincere and so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us uh, the re reward, inshallah. And I'll stop uh, with uh, the next part. So uh, Aisha radha anha, she says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi uh, had not gotten up from his majlis. He had not get, gotten up from where he was seated. وَلَا خَرَجَ أَحُدٌ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْبَيْتِ And no one had left the room. حَتَّى أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ So until the wahi was given. So in that state, while the Prophet was sitting there, Aisha had turned to the, turned to the side and uh, uh, turned away from the people. And she says that, uh, that the Prophet did not rise except that the revelation started coming, the wah wahi started coming. فَأَخَذَهُ مَا كَانَ يَأْخُذُهُ مِنَ الْبُرْحَى 
من البرحاء حتى إنه لا يتحدر منه من العرق مثل الجماني وهو في يوم شات So basically she's saying that it was a cold day and uh, he, the Prophet as usual when wahi would come it would be very um, uh, heavy on the Prophet and this is mentioned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what's the ayah um, uh, the Muslim um, Uzamil that th- uh, the قول uh, what was that the not the one, the one that we will send a heavy revelation on you or what is to come is going to be heavy I forgot the ayah, but anyway, so that um, uh, she says that he, it was a cold day, and then the Prophet was was to started to sweat, and this is one of the things that would happen to the Prophet uh, when the wahi was being revealed, and she says min so from the burden of the wahi. So, so, so this قول ثقيل, this is the revelation. It was a very heavy burden on the Prophet So he would start to sweat, and also physically, it would be a heavy burden. For example, one of the Sahaba, he was sitting, and the Prophet had his uh, leg on the thigh. He was sitting next to the Prophet and they were sitting very close. The Prophet had his leg on the thigh of the Sahabi, and he said, "Revelation started coming." He said, "I felt as if my leg was about to break." My leg was about to break because of the heaviness of the the wahi, the you know the thiqal of the of the of the um, of the revelation. So she says that unzila alayhi fqalat fusurriya an Rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa huwa yadhak. So the Prophet sallallahu as he got out of the state of of wahi, when he basically uh, you could say woke up or when he got out of that state of of revelation of wahi, wa huwa yadhak. He was smiling. And he was in a happy mood, basically he was smiling. فَكَانَتْ أَوَّلَ كَلِمَةٍ تَكَلَّمْ So the first thing that the Prophet ﷺ said, فَكَانَتْ أَوَّلَ كَلِمَةٍ تَكَلَّمْ بِهَا أَنْ قَالْ يَا عَيْشَةً رَضَى الْعَنْهَا أَمَّ اللَّهُ فَقَدْ بَرَّأَكِ So basically the Prophet ﷺ says to Aisha, giving her the bashara, giving her the glad tidings, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَقَدْ بَرَّأَكِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared your innocence. قَالَتْ فَقَالَتْ لِي أُمِّي uh, So the mother, as soon as the Prophet ﷺ said this, and he was smiling, he was beaming and smiling, and he was ha- happy now because now the revelation had come, declaring that Aisha Adana was free and innocent from this blame and from anything that they had said. So the Prophet ﷺ, uh, as he's standing there, or as he's uh, in that state, the mother of Aisha, Umm Ruman Radhan, turns to Aisha and she says, Qumi ilayh, that stand up to your husband. Stand up to your husband and, uh, you know, basically, you know, th- thank him or, you know, stand up and, uh, and t- talk to him or stand up. And she says that she was upset, you know, for all this and that, you know, how could you even think for a second that anything I did had, had, had done anything? She says, فَقُلْتُ wallahi la aqumu ilayh. I swear by Allah, I will not stand up to the Prophet ﷺ. And she says, فَإِنِّي لَا أَحْمَدُ إِلَّا اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ But I will, will not praise anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who revealed the revelation about me and declared my innocence. And uh, I will not you know, praise anyone except Allah. And basically, uh, then this continuation will start with that. We'll end with that next week. Uh, I was thinking we're going to end with this hadith uh, this week, but inshallah, uh, next week we'll, we'll talk about the results of the slander, the punishment of what happened to those who had gotten caught up in the slander from the Sahaba and also from the, you know, those who had spread the slander from the Munafiqeen. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon. Wassalamun ala al-musaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.